The Battle of Iwo Jima was a significant and bloody conflict that took place during World War II in the Pacific Theatre. It was fought between the United States and Japan and lasted from February the 19th to March the 26th, 1945. The battle was fought on a small volcanic island in the Pacific Ocean called Iwo Jima which was strategically located halfway between the Mariana Islands and Tokyo. The significance of the battle cannot be overstated. It was one of the most fierce and bloodiest battles of the war and resulted in the deaths of over 6,800 Americans and almost all of the Japanese defenders. The battle was also significant because it was the first time that the US had to fight for an island that was part of the Japanese homeland. This made the Japanese defenders even more determined to fight to the death, as they believed that their honour and the honour of their country were at stake. The strategic importance of the island for both the Allies and the Japanese made it a target for the American forces, who launched an invasion in February 1945. But before we do get into it, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss more historical content, just like this one. The island was located about 750 miles south of Tokyo, which was a critical position for the Japanese military. The island had three airfields that the Japanese used to intercept American bombers and protect the mainland from Allied attacks. Additionally, the island provided a landing site for Japanese fighter planes that were running low on fuel. As such, the American military strategists knew that capturing Iwo Jima was essential for a successful invasion of the Japanese homeland. To make matters worse for the Americans, the Japanese had heavily fortified the island, making it a challenging and deadly battleground. The Japanese had spent over a year building an intricate network of tunnels, bunkers and pillboxes on the island, making it nearly impregnable. The defences were so formidable that American strategists estimated that the battle for Iwo Jima could take months and result in tens of thousands of American casualties. To prepare for the invasion, the American military launched a massive bombing campaign against the island, dropping over 70,000 tonnes of bombs on the Japanese defences. The campaign was the heaviest bombing of any target in the Pacific, and it was designed to soften the Japanese defences and neutralise the airfields. On February the 19th, 1945, the American forces landed on Iwo Jima. The Japanese defenders were ready and they put up a fierce resistance. The terrain on the island was also difficult, with the volcanic ash and rocks making it incredibly hard to move heavy equipment and dig trenches. The American forces had to fight for every inch of ground and the battle quickly turned into a brutal and deadly slog. The battle lasted for over a month, finally ending on March 26, 1945. It was a brutal and deadly battle, with both sides suffering heavy losses. The battle can be divided into three different phases. The first phase began with the American invasion consisting of 70,000 marines landing on the beaches under heavy fire from the Japanese defenders, akin to the scenes saw at Normandy on D-Day. The American forces struggled to move inland due to the heavily fortified Japanese defences and the difficult terrain on the island. The second phase of the battle began on February the 23rd, 1945, with the capture of Mount Siribachi. This was a strategic location on the southern end of the island that provided a clear view of the surrounding terrain. The American forces had begun trying to capture Mount Suribachi for several days and on the 23rd a group of marines reached the summit and raised the American flag. The iconic photo of the flag raising would become one of the most famous images of the Second World War. However, the capture of Mount Suribachi did not mark the end of the battle. The fighting continued for another month as the American forces struggled to push inland. The third and final phase of the battle began on the 14th of March 1945. The American forces had made significant gains, but the Japanese defenders still put up fierce resistance. 
the Japanese had retreated to the northern end of the island where they had constructed their final defence. The Americans launched a massive assault on the Japanese defences using tanks and artillery to soften up the defences before launching a ground assault. The battle ended on March 26, 1945 with the elimination of the last pockets of Japanese resistance. The battle was fought by key players on each side. The American forces were led by Lieutenant General Holland Smith, who was the commander of the V Amphibious Course. The Marine forces on the ground were commanded by Major General Harry Schmidt, who was the commander of the 5th Marine Division. The Japanese forces were led by General Kiribashi, who had planned and executed the Japanese defence of the island. He ordered his troops to retreat to the northern end where they had constructed their final defence. The idea to raise a flag on Mount Suribachi was first proposed by Lieutenant Colonel Chandler Johnson, who was the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 28th Marine Regiment. Johnson believed that raising the flag would be a powerful symbol of American triumph and would boost the morale of the troops on the ground. He tasked his executive officer, Major Fred Haynes, with finding a suitable flag, and one was found in a Navy transport ship that had been hit by a Japanese bomb. The flag had been badly damaged and was in need of repair, but Haynes believed that it was the perfect flag to raise on the mountain. He took the flag to Sergeant Michael Strang, who was in charge of the platoon tasked with raising the flag. He selected five of his best marines to accompany him to the summit to raise the flag. The six servicemen were Strank, Corporal Harlan Block, Private First Class Reen Gagnon, Private First Class Ira Haynes, Private First Class Franklin Susley, and Sergeant Henry Hansen. Strank was the senior non-commissioned officer among the group and was responsible for the operation. On February the 23rd, 1945, the six Marines climbed to the summit, carrying the American flag with them. They then used the Japanese water pipe as a flagpole and raised the flag at 10.20 a.m. The flag was initially met with a muted response from the troops on the ground, who were still engaged in heavy fighting. However, as the news of the flag raising spread, it became a powerful symbol of American victory and resilience. The raising of the flag had a significant impact on the morale of the American troops. It gave them the sense of hope and pride and served as a reminder of the values and ideals that they were fighting to protect. The iconic photograph taken by Associated Press photographer Joe Rosenthal became an instant sensation and was widely distributed in newspapers and magazines across the United States. The six servicemen who raised the flag on Mount Suribachi became national heroes. They were honoured for their bravery and dedication and the flag raising became a symbol of American strength and resolve. However, the story of the flag raising was not without controversy. The initial flag raising was followed by a second flag raising, which was also photographed by Rosenthal. The second flag raising was seen by some as a staged event designed to generate more publicity for the war effort. Regardless of the controversy, the raising of the flag on Mount Suribachi remains one of the most iconic moments of the Second World War. The flag raising served as a morale booster for the American troops, who were exhausted and demoralised from the gruelling fighting. However, for the Japanese forces, the raising of the flag was a devastating blow. The Japanese soldiers had been fiercely fighting to defend their homeland, and the sight of the American flag flying over the island was a powerful symbol of their impending defeat. Many Japanese soldiers continued to fight on, even after the flag raising, but they knew that the battle was effectively lost. The legacy of the battle and the sacrifices made by the American and Japanese forces continues to be celebrated today. The surviving servicemen who raised the flag on Mount Suribachi remain national heroes and their names and stories. The legacy of the battle and the sacrifices made by the American forces and the Japanese continues to be celebrated today. The servicemen who raised the flag remain national heroes and their names and stories continue to be celebrated in books, films and other media. 
the photo continues to be reproduced on countless war memorials and monuments, serving as a powerful reminder of the sacrifices made by the men and women who fought in the Second World War. In conclusion, the Battle of Iwo Jima and the raising of the flag on Mount Suribachi are a testament to the courage and sacrifice of the American and Japanese forces who fought in World War II. The photo of the flag raising continues to serve as an enduring symbol of American military heroism and is a powerful reminder of the sacrifices made by those who fought and died in the war.